G'day. I thought you might like to join me while I attempt to make an apparatus for lifting my cray pots. One of the disadvantages of having an inflatable boat is you don't have a gunnel that you can bolt things onto. I've looked to see if anybody uh, manufactures a, a lobster pot puller for a, an inflatable boat but they don't seem to so I'm going to attempt to make my own. So what I envisage making is a box with a radius to fit over the tubes. Um, I'm going to have some protection under the box with this sheet of rubber. The sheet of rubber is what I actually tried to pull my pots up with but unfortunately anything you use uh, you pull with a rope you end up with friction on the rope and it makes, still makes it very difficult to pull. So that is going to go over the top of that and the box is going to fit on there. At the front of the box out here I'm going to have a, some rollers. That roller will be in the centre for the rope to sit in and then I'm going to cut this in half and have one, one half either side of this roller so I can pull it up uh, on the rope. Hopefully when I get to a certain height I can attach the rope to something at the back of the box and then reach over and pull the pot over by hand. Well it'll all be done by hand anyway. So the first thing I need to do is really just measure this diameter here to make sure that it is the 440 millimeters that the manufacturers uh, say it is on their drawing. I know when I've got the boat I modified a trailer for the for the phone boat when I got it I got it new and they gave me the width of the boat I thought well I'll make it a bit wider in case they don't make it exactly to size and they didn't make it exactly to size so uh, it's just as well I gave extra clearance on on this on the sides of the boat so the first thing I've got to do is actually make sure I can measure uh, the distance across there the worst scenario is that I make it too small and it won't fit in then trying to make that radius a bit bigger is going to be difficult so it's important as I said first thing I'm going to do is measure across that tube to make sure I've got the right measurement made up a pair of outside calipers from bits of scrap metal so I could measure the diameter and it measures um, at the distance uh, of about 454 457 should be the um, dimension allowing for the thickness of the rubber uh, so I'm going to make it 457 so I'd rather have a slightly loose fit than a fit that doesn't fit at all. Before I proceed I will show you a drawing of what I have uh, intentions of making. This is the aforementioned drawing. The grey area in the centre represents the tube over the top of the tube is a rubber matting of around 7 millimetres in thickness. This is the handle on the boat on the outside of the rib. The actual cray pot puller itself is made up of 17 millimetre um, pine board. On the front edge on the outside is the rollers that I previously showed to you. There will be a 20 millimetre shaft going between these two metal plates on the outside to support the rollers. On the back there will be a cleat which I can attach the rope to because when the pot comes up from the bottom it might be around the wrong way and I will need to stop pulling at this particular time and just check to make sure the pot is around the right way otherwise it will come up and jam underneath the rib. Well I've put the boat back in the shed. I'm now ready to cut out the parts for the cray pot puller apparatus. I don't even know what it's called but well that'll do. Cray pot puller apparatus. Now I have a diameter of 457. All I've got to do is work out what the radius is so I need half of that but fortunately with my intelligence I remember to bring a calculator. 
All right, so I'm as sharp as the front end of an inflatable boat. Down there like that. Had a bit of a problem in as much as um, my dividers weren't big enough to make the radius that I wanted to, for the cutout. But then I had to get a, I was going to actually buy a bigger pair, but I thought, well, just for one job. So I made up a piece of uh, just like Cardex thick paper and marked out the center and then just put the paper down and just put a series of dots around in a semicircle and then <laughs> join the dots. So um, that worked out okay. So now I've got to make the metal plates on the side for the rollers, so the roller will sit out there and, and of course the rope will come up over the top of the roller and hopefully then I can pull the crow pot onto this base here. I'll show you what I've got to so far. I've um, the saddle that goes over the top of the tube, of course you've seen that before but I have had to unscrew it all and put some glue in there. I used a product called Gorilla Glue. I don't know how good it is but I assume that since it's strong enough to stick gorillas together it would probably work on this. I was rather disappointed with the strength of this pine. It's supposed to be in glued pine but I had a problem I was working under a gazebo. It's one of those that's a portable one and I didn't tie it down because there was no wind but all of a sudden a gust of wind came out of nowhere. Well when I say it came out of nowhere obviously it came out of the wind making factory down the street. Anyway the gazebo just took off into the air over the top of my shed and landed in the uh, yard of the guy that lives behind me. Uh, it knocked this off of the um, um, saw horses that I was using and it broke um, just right across like timber. It was obviously glued there, it was actually right down here it cracked. So I've glued in there as well with um, so I'm holding it down too low. I've glued down there as well because that's where the where the crack is. So now I've got to um, sand it back and then bolt these place, plates onto the side. So this 20 millimeter hole here holds the rod that goes through with the rollers. Um, it's just a trick we use in manufacturing things like that. If you're going to make two plates, you make uh, the, the two plates without the holes, then you tack roll them together and mark out and drill all the holes through the two plates. So the bottom plate is a mirror image. Is it a mirror image? Never mind, it's an image <laughs> of the one on top. So it's just a handy little hint to, to know. I still don't know whether this is going to work. So if it doesn't work, I'll still put it on YouTube to let people know not to do this. Okay, so next time you see this, it'll be all sanded down. I'll take the sharp edges of it, clean these up and paint everything. So next time you see it, the whole thing will be finished. I'll catch you when I've done all that. Well, where have we got so far? I've finished the pot puller. Uh, I've got the rollers on the front. These are boat trailer rollers I showed you earlier. And I've got some uh, 25 mil water pipe used as spacers to space them out over the distance. The outside of the pot puller is attached to this handle by a strap. This handle is going to be in the way a little bit but it shouldn't be too much of a problem. This is the back of the pot puller. There's a strap here which is attaches the pot puller to the false deck that I installed. I've got a video on installing a false deck. I've got a couple of cleats here to uh, attach the rope to. The first cleat is so I can bring the pot up a certain distance and then have a look to make sure I have the pot around the right way. Otherwise it's going to jam under the boat. And then I've got a second one down here. This should bring the pot up to a height which I should be able to grab it and then haul it on board. But we don't really know at this point in time if it will work or not. All that's left for me to do now is to try it. Um, so next Tuesday, it's Thursday now, next Tuesday I'll drop a pot. Wednesday I'll go out with another pot, drop that and retrieve the first pot and see how this works. 
So I'll see you sometime next week. I would like to thank my friend Adog for doing the video work on the boat for me. Okay, I've thrown the cray pot in. Now it's a test to see if I can retrieve it with my cray pot retriever. Big strong man. Is he getting it? It's coming, I think. You can't see anything yet. Come on, Pop. Oh, it's coming. There it is. Now this is where I've got to hook it onto the hook that I've made. <sighs> onto the back. Which is not proving to be easy. Right, it's now hooked on. I'm going to check to make sure the cray pot is round the right way, but it's not. It's not. It's back it? to front and jammed under the boat. Oh, that's so not good. I've got to turn it around. He's got to turn it around. Jeez. That's a bit rusty, eh? <laughs> I'll see if I can pull it up from there. It must not have been in this water. Good work. Yeah, well, that was certainly easier than when I had to pull it up without the rollers. So yep. it rolled on to the uh, deck. So uh, rated out of 10, how much easier was that? However, one, you one, didn't out, of 10, my one out of 10 lobster. So if, it's That's quite, not funny. if it was full of lobster, yeah, it would be heavier. So we'll okay. find out that when the time comes. Wait, so Pop, if the lobsters can get in there, then ha they can easily get out, can't they? No, because they get in through here and they can't swim out through the top again for oh. some reason. They're, They're just pretty stupid. Well, lobsters aren't that bright, you know. So uh, it's not like fish. Fish goes to fish have schools of fish, you see. Yeah. And lobsters don't go to school. No, they're dumb. Yeah, we got that one. Yep. So good. Well, that's the end of the video. It looks to me like my pot retriever is working okay. And not only that, it's a cutting board for fishing. So that's the end of the video. I'd like to once again thank my friend Adog for doing the camera work for me. Oh, a close up of Adog. Very nice. <laughs> <laughs> okay then, thanks for watching. You can turn it off now. You can turn it off now. You can turn it off. You